Good afternoon, young people. Chris Grota here. Jeff Watley, nice to see you again. Yeah, we love our young people here at North Jefferson, and we're doing this for you. We want to make some videos just for you. Well, it's going to be something for you and the whole family. I know that we are uh, oftentimes to be a light in this world, to who has a light and, and, and lights it and puts it under a basket, but those that we have a light, we put it on a lampstand so that everyone might see. And so that's what our lesson is going to be on is from Matthew chapter 5. But the kind of example that you can set while at school is such a tremendous one and it's a lot of pressure. But what happens when you're not able to do that? Or the example that you can set in public and you're not able to do that. That's what our lesson is going to be on today is to being a good example. Yeah. We and want you to think about all your family. We want you to think about the church family. We don't want you to forget about the church. No. And we also want you to think about your friends at school. And yes. so we're going to talk about some ways in which we can do that today. What's the first thing we can do? Well, the first thing is to remember Scripture and the fact that who we are and, you know, whose we are. We're children of God, and we, God loves us, and He expects us to do our very best to try to share that love with others. And so, remember in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example of, and I think one translation says, to the believers. So That's you right. can be an example of a believer, but you can also be an example to the believers, and you're going to do that in word kind of like by the things you say, but it also in conduct, the things that you do. That's right. You can be a Timothy. You can be a Timothy. In spirit, in faith, in purity, all these things is what we can always strive to do. And it's, it's challenging when you feel like maybe we're isolated. Mm -hmm. And so maybe this will light a fire to when you get another opportunity that you'll be ready to go, but also some ideas of what we can do while we're at home. So the first thing is, I want us to consider a prayer list, or better yet, how about a prayer journal? Ooh, I like that idea. Well, we're going to have one page, and I'll post it on the, the Facebook, that uh, shows the, the actual prayers that you list for your family, for your friends, for your church family, for your community, for your country, and maybe even think it globally. And then at the end, list a few prayers for yourself. As you realize that there's a lot going on in the world that we shouldn't feel sorry for ourselves and what we think we're missing out on, but see all the other things going on in life. And at the very end of the page, you'll have the same ways to show how God works and answers in our prayers. And sometimes our prayers are answered with maybe a little longer. You'll have to endure this. But it also you'll see God's providential care sometimes answers some of the prayers of people yeah. that's health is not well, and you start to see them heal, and it just really... I want us to continue to have a little prayer log that we take time to pray. I think it's easier to stay organized when you have a list and a log because now I'm making prayer very important to me. It becomes an active uh, a part of my life and I'm being organized because there's so many people that need our prayers right now. In fact, you can talk to your mom and dad about their Facebook page and find out how many people are asking for prayers on their Facebook right now and they'll show you on their phone it's a lot of people. I, I know right now, I see on television, I can see emergency workers, I can see volunteer groups sort of gathering outside in a, in a way to, to, to talk up to nurses and doctors and yes. emergency medical staff. Uh, there's a lot of people that are on the front lines of dealing with people that are exposed to uh, possible coronavirus every day. And, and so they're they're really trying to be very cautious at how they do this, but it is dangerous, young people, and we need to we need to thank the people that are getting out there working to help serve the rest of us uh, to keep us safe. Yes, yeah, so on that list, when you get to community, you can put down your local judge, like Judge Lee, the decisions mm -hmm. he has to make. You can put down leadership all the way up to our president. Do you not think that he might need some prayers also? Everybody. Put the teachers that you might not be thinking about because teachers, president, our judge, our doctors, our nurses, all those that are part of the essential uh, needs that are still going to work. You know what? They have families too. Yeah. And they're going out also. So we want to lift up those people. But also, how about those? And we'll show you some of these. These, I don't show you the cards inside, but I want to post the addresses. And so thankful to hear that some of our members have already, already made cards for our uh, senior citizens in retirement homes. And we have the Green Hill Villas, we have the Pleasant Springs, we have the Heritage. All these right here where they feel like they're just isolated. 
that their families can't see them. Just like Sean Embry's grandfather that he's taken care of for a couple of years at least. And now that he's in a re rehab center that isn't much of a rehab, if you can't get that encouragement face to face, but what we can do is be praying and also be writing cards. They can be generic to him or to a her, to a Mr. or Mrs. And let them know that you're thinking about them and praying for them. Write a note to the doctors in the emergency room. Write a note, like I said, to um, just some of your friends maybe. Because we live in an information age. And that's the when we can team up with technology. You know, the technology, there's a lot of problems and distractions and social media and different things. But you know there is some good that can be done from that too. Isn't that right, Chris? There's some good we can do. There's not only our smartphones, our apps, and social media, but we can stay connected like never before. So with your parents' permission, maybe you can take a chance to call them, but also reach out to call some others and just see if you can get a hold of them and talk to them because there's nothing more encouraging to someone, I'm saying now that I'm getting older, than have a child thinking outside their own needs and be an example to others as you actually care for what they're going through. So two things you've told me, Jeff. One, I can have a prayer journal. Yes. And number two, I can use mom and dad's telephone. <laughs> yes, if, if they'll let you use it or do it, how about this? How about a family time? A family time that if you want to do your prayers and you can't think about all those, that's when you ask mom and dad you know, to help you fill that out. And then make sure you have a dedicated time each day. It's oftentimes the best time is before we go to sleep at night. But how many times have you had a long day? You know, that would be so cool for Kate and Kelly and Kendall if they were able to FaceTime with some of you guys out there. Yes. I think that would be I so cool be for great. them. They miss everybody at church, especially their friends. Yes, and so we can also do the FaceTime. We can do uh, other apps that we hope to get a little bit more familiar with. But make sure you're setting a time together to pray together and also maybe to communicate together as a family. You can do it in what they call snail mail, something a little bit slower than email, but there's nothing better than getting a handwritten card with your drawing on it or something that shows encouragement that you took the time to write or to draw. The, I, I guarantee you as we go to the nursing homes and those retirement villages, how many things are on the wall from their own family, but if you were to send them something, I bet you they put it on their wall too. I bet you they would. And they would cherish that. And so the more we put these prayer lists down and we can actually look through the vision of prayer, we'll see people in a whole different light. You will see them as God sees them. And every soul is precious. And so let's use the technology to reach out to those that are feeling isolated, as I'm sure you are also, mm -hmm. and taking time to connect. And then, there's, and then there's a third thing you want to talk to us about, and that's how can we help other people? Well, as I said, we can do the, the, the communication part, but what about out there making a list to where we find out what are some of the needs? And, of course, you know one need right now might be the TP. You know, it might be paper products. By the way, cleaning supplies. we actually have ordered extra toilet paper here at this congregation so that if you have needs or know of somebody else who does, we can get toilet paper by the roll to them. We have those supplies here. We need you to help us find people to help. Yes, we can also try to figure out if people need any kind of food or more and more as we realize that they can't get out. Yeah. Maybe there's some kind of way that we can help serve in that, that now, manner. Now, right now, our, our, uh, our county doesn't want the whole family going no. to the grocery store. No. But somebody can go to the grocery store, and you can go to help deliver the food at somebody's doorstep. Yep. Yep, with your parents' permission. You can do something. This will be one of the few times you can probably ding-dong ditch. You can ding-dong the, the doorbell and run back to the car. And no one's <laughs> going to get mad because there's going to be a, a care package on the porch. So make sure that we have prayer time. Make sure that we have you know communication time as a family to each other, but also reaching out. Make sure that there's time to serve. But can you also make time just to sit and talk about the things that you're thankful for? Each day, let's take time to mention at least two or three things that you're thankful for. I think that's so important. Yeah. All right. So we've got that. We're going to do a. We want to do a prayer journal. Maybe we can get a notebook. Maybe we can get mom and dad to give us a notebook or some paper. Maybe we can keep a three ring binder and actually write things down. I got some folders up here, and I'll print out but, those and, sheets. And, and you got a sheet that we can download and print, don't yes, you? Yes. Okay. All right. So there's that, and and then we need to. Uh, 
to, to help get mom and dad to help us with technology. Maybe we can call some members of the church or some friends from school or maybe our teachers. And, and maybe then, you can help me with some technology. <laughs> I'll tell you, if you want to learn about technology, just hand okay. your phone over to a five-year-old yeah. and they'll teach you. So we also want to remember, remember on that list that it's not only the friends you miss, it's not only the family that you're around, but family that you're separated from. It's also your church family. There's yeah. many people that miss the kind of, there's nothing better inside of a congregation than hearing the laughter and even sometimes the crying during the lessons. Absolutely. You know that's, that's a baby. thing I miss. You miss yeah. that sound. But also remember those of leadership, both local, yeah. federal, and also our nurses and doctors. They really need our prayers. Now, you have a little craft that you want to show us today, don't you? Oh, yes, 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 yeah. yes. Well, now, I'm going to get to be a cameraman, and I'm going to get to zoom in on <laughs> Jeff. Jeff is going to show you here in just a minute. So I'm going to go behind the camera, and Jeff's going to show you All this right. thing. Thank you. I was watching it, and I don't, the Surgeon General of the United States, I think his name's Jerome Brown, he was doing this, and I thought it was so neat because I see everybody else wearing masks. So all you're going to need is a bandana. You need one bandana, or you can even get an old shirt, cut up a square about the size of a bandana, one coffee filter, now these are precious, and two rubber bands. So we get two rubber bands, a coffee filter, and it's usually like that, so just fold it in half, and then you get your bandana. And what you're going to do is you're going to fold it to the middle, meet it up in the middle, and then just fold it one more time in the middle, one more time in the middle. And when you have that, you have a little mouth. You say, ah, and put your filter right in the middle of that. Show, uh, set it up and show it to them in the camera where they can oh, see right. where that's going to be. Can you see that I folded it over half? Uh -huh. You put it right in the middle. Have that little square right there where your nose is going to fit in it. And then you cover it up again. I wish I had a little platform that was... And once you do that, now these are some heavy duty rubber bands to hang onto my ears because my face is kind of bigger than yours. So you I'm going to zoom in on your hands real good, Jeff. All right. And then you put it on both sides. I like this bandana because it has a little lines right there that I know to go about the same part in. You see it looks like a Tootsie Roll kind of? Once you have that, just fold the ends back to the middle. The ends back to the middle. And once you have that, you have the mask that's going to go on your face. I don't know if you can hear me now. And then over your ears. And so there you go. The coffee filter, a homemade mask that you can wear and have it to when you go out. Now the mask... I'm not sure all the details if it helps you to stay as safe, so you need to wash your hands. You need to be careful and don't put your hands in your mouth or even pick your nose. I'm sorry that sounds gross, but don't do that. And after you've worn it, you probably need to wash it. Yes, these are great to wash. You just pull it apart, get another filter. But I think everybody, you can find these for a dollar most places. But this right here makes a little mask because what you're really doing is sometimes our young people are so healthy that they might be carriers and not even know it. And so it helps you from sneezing. And you all are great about sneezing into your sleeve. Keep it up. But if you have the mask, it just helps. The, the sooner we get this eradicated or get it to slow down the rise, the sooner things will get back to normal. And we're looking forward to that. I thank you so much for taking the time to spend it with us. We hope to bring you some more things. But let's get this prayer journal started now and also find ways we can help. Thank you.